Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping in. I sure appreciate it and appreciate you. Um, it's July. It's July. We need to talk about what happened in June. I already went over my July palettes and I realized when I did my July video uh, that I kind of tied in some No Pan Left Behind stuff that wasn't that wasn't meant to be tied in. I was kind of fuzzy yesterday. I'm filming the next day. So yeah, I apologize for that. I didn't mean to. That Those were just the palettes I intended to use for the month of July. And you can see them back there. But this one, we need to talk about what came into my stash in June, what left the stash in June, why I'm scared for July. <laughs> and then we need to rank the palettes that I used last month as well. Okay, guys. So... Again, a quick apology for video changes. I'm still trying to get used to my new camera settings. I'm playing with different uh, frames per second. I'm learning what that even is. I am not tech savvy when it comes to cameras and the details behind the cameras. I just, I don't, I'm wrapping my head around it. I'm educating myself. I'm working on advancing my knowledge in it. And with that comes experimentation. So I am experimenting with some of the camera settings. So please bear with me if the next few videos are kind of crazy. I know that the last one I did it in some kind of like portrait mode style where it blurred my background and put the focus on me, but I honestly don't think I really like that version very much. I think I like this better, but I'm getting way off track. Let's focus on June. Here we go. All right, y'all. Scoochy, scoochy. We gotta get some room here so you can see. Um, all right. <laughs> in products. In products. Um, okay, so I grabbed the Natasha Denona Golden Palette. We'll talk more about that later within my ranking, so I'm not going to get into it much right now. Um, as you can see, I picked that up for $39. Ooh, I cashed out like $30 in points on my uh, from my Natasha Denona website account. Um, if you haven't done that and you purchased a lot of Natasha Denona, I highly recommend it. Um, you get like 100 points for your birthday. You get 100 points for leaving a review. Different things like that that you can easily accumulate a lot of points really fast. So it might be worth investing in. I don't know. But um, so we'll talk more about Natasha Denona in a little bit. Uh, next up there you can see I purchased the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm in Iced Coffee for $16. I did. This was my first experience with the brand and this product. So I cashed out my... Sephora points for $10 off. It's normally 24. And if you're new to this type of my video, I always round up. So if something is $25 and change, I'm going to say it's $26. If it was $10 and change, it's going to be $11. I always round up just to be a little more... I'd rather be over than under when calculating my total, if that makes sense. But back to the point. So it was, I, I took $10 off, which made it $14, but then, you know, taxes. So I rounded it up to $16 because it was 15 and some odd change. But this is what I picked up. It's the Summer Fridays in iced coffee, okay? First off, I want to say I, I, I didn't understand this product fully to me. The way that people were explaining it, they explained it to be more of like a gloss. No, 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 no. This is exactly what it says. It says lip butter balm. It's a balm. It has a little bit of a shiny texture to it when you initially put it on, but it absolutely feels like a balm. It's balm in a more liquidy form. So if you're looking for a lip balm, that's that's these guys with a little bit of shine. But um, here is what this one is. Now, I will say that my initial take on the smell was, ooh, caramel macchiato. So, oh. It smells like walking into a Starbucks, honestly. It smells so good. But I have two kids and I asked them both to smell it. My oldest one's like, oh, that smells like the coffees you make. And I was like, yes. And then my youngest one said, oh, that sounds like waffles and syrup. Now I can only smell waffles and syrup. <laughs> so if either one of those scents intrigues you, you might like this one. It smells good regardless if I'm picturing caramel macchiatos or waffles. But it smells really good. Um, I do like it. I don't love the price point. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Next up, you will see that I grabbed the e.l.f. Sun Boss Gloss in Pink Me Girl. Um, I did do a review on this on my channel, and this is a winner. I love this gloss. I think it's fantastic. Um, it definitely has a thicker, more stay put formula. It's not a glide on like an oil. So if you're looking for that smoother consistency, you're not going to get that from this. But I do love that added extra SPF protection. I've experienced burns on my lips. That's not cool. Blistering. So 
I no longer have to wipe my SPF on my lips when I put it on in the morning, which I love because I hate this, the taste of it throughout the day. And I'm sure I'm poisoning my body that way too. Oh well. <laughs> but now I don't have to poison my body because I have this. Um, I do really like this. I really want to pick up the peachy peachy queen color because it's peachy and I'm in the summer warm tone vibes so I may pick up another shade or two of this even though I very clearly do not need it but I can't help myself and then you'll see kind of like a cluster there on the 14th I picked up another summer Fridays lip balm this is the shade poppy um it is the thing about both of these like the iced coffee one is more of like a cool tone brown hopefully this doesn't gross you guys out too bad I mean I do use them but you can see here that this is more of like a cool tone color. Um, it's pretty sheer once it gets on your lips. It has just the tiniest amount of color. Um, but for me, that scent and that color are more fall winter vibes and I needed one for more summer vibes. So I picked up this color and here is what she looks like. Um, she's very red when she first goes on, but it shears out within minutes of you rubbing your lips together. Um, this scent is Kool-Aid. I couldn't peg it. I kept, so of course, you know, I asked my kids because they're pretty spot on. One kid said, that smells like summer. And the other kid said, that's Kool-Aid. And I said, yes and yes. <laughs> it smells really good. It looks really good. It feels good. It's more of a summery color. So I'm okay right now. I do have three more shades scents on my list, but with them being $24 each, I've got to slow down on that one. I don't know why I'm willing to pay $24 for those. I don't know. They're a freaking balm. I have three other balms in front of me that I love just as much, but I continue to pay $24 for these. Why? I don't know. Somebody explain this to me because I feel like I'm losing my mind over this. And then you will also see the NYX brow pencil. Um, this guy right here. Spoiler alert. I did finish my previous one. So I did pick up a backup. So this is a replacement. And then same thing with this, the Ulta Beauty Brow Gel. Um, I had a sample of that one from one of their like gift with purchase. And I love that brow gel so freaking much. I haven't used it in a couple of days because I'm out and my brows have been unruly jerks. So I'm so excited to go back into this. I am trying to finish up a couple other brow gels that I have. But, um, and same with eyebrow pencils. But I picked these two up because there are days in my life where I need my makeup to be on point and last all day. So I'm going to need these for those for those long days. And then you'll see another line, but it's blurred out because I bought four products in that particular haul. And one of them is going to be included in a very near future giveaway. So make sure y'all are paying attention to the videos they are going to be thrown in somewhere in the very near future. But one of those products is going to be included in the giveaway. So I have that, but there's three other products that I purchased that I'm going to tell you about. The first one here is the Honey Butter Lip Mask from Woosley's. I really like this. I have the Peppermint Twist version and I've been using it since November, December when I started getting into the holiday spirit and it looks like I haven't even touched it because this stuff is thick. Well, there it is. Hang on. Mom break. <laughs> but, um, so I just, I, I had the pepper one and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's a fantastic lip mask. I use it almost every night. Um, I've barely made it in it. So this thing's going to last me for freaking ever. I just needed a scent change. I'm, I normally love peppermint all year long, but I just needed something different right now. And I found this honey butter. You know, when I got it home and smelled it, because I don't like to open the packages in TJ Maxx. I picked up a TJ Maxx, by the way, $4.99. I mean, that's incredible. Incredible. Look how much product is in here. And it's just, it'll last you in eternity. It will last you in eternity. But this went through me for a minute because you can definitely pick up the honey. But it almost has like a lemony honey scent to it, in my opinion. So at first I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but I used it for the first time last night and I do really like it and it performs just like the other one does. So I was really, really excited that I ended up loving this. I mean, at $5 a pop too, this will last you forever. Let me show you. Actually, let me grab my pepper one and I'll show you. Here is the same brand. It is the peppermint twist. And like I said, I use this probably six to seven days a week every day. And I started this in, let's say December, like look how much of that is left. See what I mean? It doesn't take much. 
it spreads really nicely. It lasts all night long and I sleep with my mouth open so my lips are dry. <laughs> it's, it's a great product and finding it at TJ Maxx for $5, I mean, to me, that's a super big win. So I really like these. They have a ton of different scents. Um, I just periodically check TJ Maxx for these and because they last so long, I don't pick them up, but I needed to this time. And the other thing I found at TJ Maxx for also the same price, $4.99. I just saw Jen Phelps recently talk about this and I've been seeing it every time I go and I was like, okay, I need to try it. It's the Paw Paw Scrub and Nourish. And here is what it looks like outside of the package. It's really interesting. So this top part comes off and you've got a nice lip scrub in here. I've used it once. I actually used it this morning when I was getting ready. And it's a sugar, a really fine sugar scrub. So it's not harsh on the lips. Um, like I will say that even though I do really like this one from e.l.f., but their lip exfoliants are thicker chunks. And in my opinion, they're just a little too rough on my lips sometimes. They're great when I need an ultra deep exfoliation, but on a daily use exfoliator, I can't, I can't use it. It hurts. This one did not hurt. It was very smooth, very soft, but I still feel like it exfoliated. But honestly, as long as I'm using my lip masks, I don't feel like I need exfoliating, but this was a great option for those days I forget the mask. And then this bottom part comes off and then it's got the balm. I will say I haven't used the balm yet and it's because I used the other products that I'm about to show you first, but um, it is, it was $5. The scrub part alone is really nice. So I will do reviews on these later on. But um, the last thing I'm gonna show you that I picked up is the Wet n Wild Lip Oil. I have a small reel on this on my um, Instagram, but for those of you that don't have Instagram or don't wanna go over and find it, a uh, quick little initial impression of this. This is nice, this is nice. I didn't know uh, Wet n Wild had lip oils. My Walmart had this shade, the clear shade and like a pinky shade. I didn't know how pigmented they were gonna be, so I just grabbed this one. It's summery. As you can see, it's on my lips right now, um, and I did swatch it earlier, so there's a tiny hint of like a orangey peachy color, but it's pretty sheer, um, but it's very thin. If you're gonna compare it to the e.l.f. lip oil, this is much thicker and cushionier. Is that a word, cushionier? More cushiony? That's better, more cushiony. Um, but it has a very similar doe foot. I'll show you. Very soft doe foot. Um, in my opinion, it's virtually the same as the e.l.f. one, um, but it has a slightly minty scent, I would say. Um, I really like it. This is the shade Orange Blossom. I, I'm really enjoying this. I have it on right now. Again, it's very, very thin compared to the e.l.f. ones. It, I've had it on for about two hours and you can still kind of see it. I can still totally feel it. I haven't had anything to eat or drink yet, so take that how you want. But, um, and then the last product I'm not gonna show you because it's gonna be part of my giveaway. So expenditure wise, June wasn't awful, but it does have me thinking some kind of way for my purchases for July. <sighs> okay, I, I, <laughs> I've asked a bunch of friends, would you count this, would you count this, would you count this? I've already set aside money for the Sydney Grace Christmas in July sale. Sydney Grace has been on my radar since last year. I know they do Christmas in July. So I set the money aside for it already but the purchase won't happen until July. So if I put myself on a no buy in July, does it count because I made a purchase in July even though the money was set aside and claimed for it back in June? I see how I justify things. <laughs> I can see it both ways, I don't know. But it really is just gonna depend on what their sale is. It hasn't been announced at the time I'm filming it. So I'm like, come on, please get back with me because that's gonna determine whether I do a no buy or a low buy for July because I'm looking at my makeup collection going, okay, Mac, like you need to stop. Like you, you need to stop. We'll talk more about that in another video I have coming up as well. But uh, here is my out page. A uh, couple things, the CoverGirl Yummy Gloss. I think I still have pictures. I had to get a new phone. So uh, I don't know if the pictures transferred. If I had them, I'll pop them up here real quick, but they leak so bad. They leak so bad and I'm a slight germaphobe. So if I go to grab that and open it and it gets on my hands, then I touch other things, I immediately get pissed off on a level that is not acceptable. But I do, I get pissed off because I don't like that feeling on stuff. So, and these were standing up on my desk in those little uh, makeup organizers that have the lipstick compartments. 
they're leaking standing up, both of them. And as much as I like the product, I don't love it enough to deal with the leaking around the cap and creating a problem that pisses me off. So I went ahead and just decluttered them. I have more than enough lip products that I love and I just like these, they're good, but I just, I can't deal with the leaking. The leaking ticked me off. The Wet n Wild Micro Brow Pencil, I love that formula. The packaging sucks. It broke so easily. It came apart in like four different pieces. And even though the product wasn't empty, I couldn't deal with the broken packaging. It was not worth the three or four dollars that the product is. The formula is great. I did like the formula. I like their shade range. It had great stay power, but I'm not dealing with that kind of package break. So if it had stronger packaging, it wouldn't have gone anywhere. But the packaging alone made me toss this out. And then you can see the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. That's why I bought another one. I completely emptied that sucker. I really like that Micro Brow Pencil. I use a combination of a Micro Pencil and the e.l.f. Instant Lift. I like the e.l.f. Instant Lift to give me more of a fuller, thicker looking brow. And then I use the Micro Pencil to fill in some gaps and like kind of give me that more tail effect. So I use a combination of both those products and that, that seems to work pretty well for me. Most days when my brows aren't unruly jerks. Okay guys, so I'm back in the middle, which means now we get to rank the palettes that I use this month. Let's go. Okay guys, so I had eight palettes in this rotation. Um, initially when I started this, I had ColourPop Fresh Greens in here, but I ended up swapping that out for the Natasha Denona Golden since that came in, I think it was the end of May or early June, but I had already completed the Fresh Greens palette. That was in there for an alternative fun palette if I got tired of the warm tones. But then the golden palette came out, which is just more warm neutrals. I wanted that one more. <laughs> so I swapped those out. So that's the only major change that happened throughout the month. So there are two palettes that I did not complete No Pan Left Behind on. And I am okay with that because it was never my intention to complete No Pan Left Behind with these palettes. They were supplemental. They were something fun. And one of the palettes I knew I would be using more in a different season. Um, I'm very seasonally driven with my choices in my eyeshadow palettes and colors. So that's kind of why... Well, I'll explain that when I get there, but the first one I didn't complete and didn't intend to was the Inslee Rain Cold Moon palette. Um, this was new to me and I really wanted to play with it and I wanted a cool tone color story um, as an alternative option in this this playful war playfully warm month. So this was a really great um, addition. I got a couple uses out of this one. Um, let's see, I used Winter Rose, I used Cat Mint and Kion and then Garnet and Forbidding. So those are the shades that I used uh, within this palette for this month. I just wanted to get a taste of this. This is more gonna be a winter palette for me. So you'll see this probably again November, December, January-ish. The other palette I did not complete No Pan Left Behind on and I am okay because it has more of a wintry aspect to it on part of the palette is the Born to Run by Urban Decay. This is my ancient girl. Um, I love her, but Essentially, I have used, oh my gosh, this palette is so awkward to hold sometimes. Essentially, I've used this half of the palette. This little section down here to me is more winter vibes, more Christmassy vibes. I find myself using this half of the palette way more often in the winter and this half in the summer. So that's kind of how I see this palette. To me, it's two different palettes. I cut it in the middle. This is spring and summer. This is winter. That's how I view it. So I got a huge use out of this. Basically, just this six to eight shades in here are the ones I didn't get to. Okay, so that leaves six palettes left. Let's rank them within each other. Please remember that this is a ranking within this month, within these six palettes. If I were to rank them in my overall collection, they may fall in different places. The palette I put at number four and the palette number three may be complete polar opposite positions if I were to rank it in an overall collection. So this is just how I feel this month based on the usage, the color story, the performance within the six palettes within this month. Coming in at number six, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's the ColourPop Peach Out Palette. It's just extremely monochromatic, which duh, it's a peach out palette. It's all peach, but this is what she looks like. Um, I just feel like it's really mid-tone. You definitely have a darker shade and you have a lighter shade, but everything else is just super mid-tone. So it's not a favorite of mine, even though I do love this color story. It's just not a tippy top favorite, which is why it's at the bottom of this current mixture. 
Number five, this is definitely like a top favorite in my collection. However, just within this month, because it is only a five panner, there's only so many shades and so many looks you can do and use, but it's the Natasha Denona Mini Nude. I've talked about this for being a five pan. This has some pretty amazing versatility. Um, it's a beautiful color story and you can go really, really warm or pretty, pretty neutral. So while I top of the line formula and it, the formula definitely beats out a few of the other ones sitting up here, it's just a five pan compared to an 18 pan the 18 pan you're gonna get a lot more versatility out of so nothing wrong with it it's just it's smaller than everybody else number four is the alter ego sahara palette again it's just because of what it's up against in this lineup and just the time of year um i love the versatility of this palette we've talked about this palette uh, more times than i care to admit on my channel already um but something that was different in this rotation versus other rotations is I made a couple all matte looks with this one. And in my mind, I was comparing it to my Makeup by Mario mattes, my Patrick Ta, Major Dimensions 3. And even though I have those palettes, this still holds water. So that really impressed me in that aspect. But you only have the three shimmers here. Everything else is matte. And it's, it's just a really versatile palette. I like the formula a whole, whole lot. The only thing I don't love is... Um, this matte black it's not as pigmented as I want it to be it kind of almost becomes a dark gray that's my only beef with it outside of that I think this is a lovely palette guys coming at number three in this month's ranking is the ABH soft glam this is an OG it is a, just a very beautiful color story I know a lot of people have a tendency to see this as a fall palette I don't see it as a fall palette for me this is definitely a spring summer I know you've got some of these like more wintry style tones just in this corner but in my opinion these oranges and these pinks are very springy and very summery in my mind so I got quite a bit of use out of this I used all, every shade almost twice which is really great because you know more usage it was really fun I just I love the looks I get from this the formula is really really nice it's very soft very blendable so this was a really fun palette to use this month Coming in at number two this month is the Sigma Ambiance palette. Here's what she looks like. But this is the Sigma Ambiance palette. She's just a warm, neutral babe. She really is. She, every time I wore this, I felt like a gold goddess. I really did. Like, everyone bowed to me. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. I, I'm joking. But it made me feel really beautiful. It made me feel elegant. It made me feel just really, really good. Um, I can rock these tones. So I'm sure that that, you know, <laughs> makes a difference that this is my comfort zone when it comes to eyeshadow colors. But um, this, the, the matte formula in Sigma is just butter. It is so smooth and blends so easily with like hardly no effort whatsoever. Um, the shimmers are decent. I wish they had just a little bit more oomph to them, but the mattes are just absolutely unbeatable. Another thing that I really like about these Sigma palettes too is that they come with brushes and it's the nice brushes. Um, I will say that because of my eye shape, they're not my favorite brush size and shape like this one is just a little too broad for my crease and this one's just a little too broad for my outer corner so I do use it but I really feel like if I could get the same density but just a smaller size I'm, and I'm certain Sigma has that I just haven't taken the time to look but um the quality of the brush is beautiful it's really soft and then also to quickly come back to the palette something I wanted to mention something about the layout what I love about Sigma is in my brain they they plotted it, they plotted it, uh, yeah, I guess plotted it in a way that my brain sees them in quads. So like, that's a good quad. That's a good quad. That's a good quad. That's a good quad. See what I mean? Like they're just really great in quads if you're really struggling to put a look together. And that's just something that I've noticed with this particular palette that I really appreciated. And last but not least, I'm sure you've already guessed it. It's the only one I haven't talked about. Um, coming in at number one for the month was the Golden Palette from Natasha Denona. But we got to talk about this packaging. You guys, it's beautiful, but do you see the fingerprints? <sighs> Come on, dude. All right, but anyways, Golden Palette. You can see that she has gotten some love already. I really like this palette. I'm actually going to attempt to keep it in July's rotation because 
I love this palette. <laughs> I love this. I actually did um, a video with this in the Yucca palette, which is my favorite palette from last year and definitely still a top favorite at this point. Um, but, you know, this palette is just so beautiful. It really just is. And I know it has a lot of similar shades to the original gold palette, which I don't have. I have the dupe version from Alter Ego, which is the goddess palette. And I love that palette too. So it's no surprise, but it's just, there's something about this particular one. I don't know. She's just incredible. It's been talked about so much recently, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. But this was definitely number one. I think I'm going to bring it with me into July because I'm not done with it yet. But it's definitely a top contender for first place this year. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I sure appreciate you. And I hope you have a wonderful July. Later, watch.